Hey, welcome back to another video discussion in the series. This one is about gamma-hydroxybutyric acid, also known as GHB, corresponding to Chapter 80 in Goldfrank's Toxicologic Emergencies. There's only one learning objective for this session, which is to be able to describe the toxidrome seen with GHB overdose, including both the clinical signs and symptoms, but also to make some comments on the time course, which is distinctly different from other drugs that cause a similar sedative hypnotic-like toxidrome. On this slide, we see the close chemical similarities between GHB, gamma-hydroxybutyric acid, on the left, and GABA, gamma-aminobutyric acid, on the right, which is our primary inhibitory neurotransmitter. The base structure here is butyric acid with a four-carbon chain, where the first carbon away from the carboxylic acid functional group is the alpha carbon, next is beta, and the next and final one is the gamma carbon, which connects to a hydroxyl group, constituting the H in GHB, but it's connected to an amine group in GABA. The structures here are so similar it makes sense that GHB might bind to GABA receptors. GHB is normally found in the body in very small amounts since it interconverts with GABA, but when a person ingests exogenous GHB as a drug, its effects are greatly increased. GHB will cause CNS depression primarily through agonism at GABA B receptors. GHB as a drug has been around since the early 1960s, but began to gain popularity as a drug of abuse or misuse in the 1980s and 90s. The first group to get on the GHB bandwagon were bodybuilders. They knew that GHB could make you tired and go to sleep, and they knew that most of the endogenous growth hormone is released while you sleep, so they reasoned that GHB would be a bodybuilding drug. Cool theory, but it doesn't work. And then GHB became one of the more popular club drugs used in dance clubs and at raves. If you get the dose right, it's reputed to produce euphoric effects. But the problem is that the dose response curve is quite steep, leading to plenty of unintentional overdoses. And it also has a reputation, not pictured here, as a date rape drug, in that GHB could be used, like many other drugs, to facilitate sexual assault. Intoxication with GHB causes rapid onset and rapid offset CNS depression. So these patients present with, essentially, a sedative hypnotic toxidrome, which is to say they're very sleepy or maybe even comatose. Some other fairly common findings that may be seen with GHB include respiratory depression, some patients may need to be intubated and ventilated, bradycardia, a relatively slow but typically not dangerously slow heart rate, small pupils or meiosis, so the patient might be thought to have opioid toxicity. Go ahead and try naloxone, no harm, no foul if you're wrong. And myoclonus, some uncoordinated intermittent muscle jerking. So it might be said that the classic GHB toxidrome is sedation, bradycardia, and myoclonus. But one thing that differentiates GHB from other sedative hypnotics is the potential for a very rapid recovery. The classically described case of GHB overdose is a young person brought to the hospital unresponsive and barely breathing, they're endotracheally intubated. The workup doesn't find anything specifically wrong, and we're just waiting for a bed in the ICU so that we can move the patient upstairs. Maybe this takes a few hours, especially if the hospital is full. And then the patient abruptly wakes up, pulls out their endotracheal tube, and wants to leave the hospital against medical advice. This exact scenario has happened to me, as the doctor, not the patient. So GHB was experiencing some great popularity, and it was being sold as a so-called dietary supplement. Loads of overdose patients were being reported, so the government responded by banning non-prescription GHB. Well, don't underestimate people's ingenuity in continuing to find ways to intoxicate themselves. When GHB was banned, people started using GBL, gamma-butyrolactone, which is metabolized in the body into GHB, but it didn't fall under the same ban. And then when GBL was banned, it was substituted with 1,4-butanediol, which is metabolized in a similar manner as ethanol, you guessed it, right into GHB as well. Treatment of GHB overdose is symptomatic and supportive, and in severe cases, that will involve intubating the patient. But remember that GHB wears off pretty quickly. A person with severe benzodiazepine or barbiturate overdose might be expected to take a few days to recover. But it's not rare, as described before, for a patient who arrived in a very deep coma to awaken a lot faster than you might expect if it was from GHB. Like many other sedative hypnotics that act through GABA agonism, patients can develop GHB tolerance, and they can experience withdrawal if the drug is abruptly discontinued or the dose too rapidly decreased. 
and the onset of withdrawal can be very fast, even within one to six hours of the patient's last use. Sedative hypnotic withdrawal is no joke, and if inadequately treated, may result in life-threatening seizures and autonomic dysfunction. You'd treat GHB withdrawal with the same medications you'd use for withdrawal from ethanol or other sedative hypnotics, typically starting with benzodiazepines and progressing if needed to barbiturates, and with GHB, since it acts through GABA-B channels, you may need to consider baclofen, a GABA-B agonist. And one final interesting note, while non-prescription GHB is a Schedule I drug of abuse, GHB, or its sodium salt, sodium oxabate, is a Schedule III licensed pharmaceutical agent. It's sold under the brand name Xyrem, and it's used to treat excessive sleepiness or cataplexy, suddenly falling asleep, in patients with narcolepsy. The theory is that narcoleptic patients don't get enough good sleep at night, so we're using GHB to force them to have better sleep. But because the drug is so short-acting, you take a dose at night before bed, set your alarm for halfway through the night, which wakes you up so that you can take another dose. That's all for GHB and its analogs. I'll be seeing you around.